Today we're going to uh, show you how to build a 3 inch bore pneumatic PVC cannon. Uh, this will fire on 120 psi um, safely and uh, we're going to give you a bunch of instruction on how to do that. Here's a description of all the parts and pieces and I'll show you uh, in the video all of the parts that you'll need to acquire. Um, 3 inch PVC pipe, 6 inch PVC pipe, this is a reducer section, so you have, you have a 6 inch coupling and then a 6 by 4 reducer and a 4 to 3 inch reducer to get down to the actual bore. The bore of the, the, bore of the cannon is 3 inch. Uh, it will shoot a, um, a standard baseball or you could shoot a 20 ounce Mountain Dew as well. Um, on the back side, so this is, this is, the, this is the forward uh, side, this is, the, this is the breech or the back side of the cannon. And you will have a, on the back side there will be a six inch clean out, which is a threaded assembly that, that essentially allows you to access the back side of the barrel where you would load the ball. Um, it also contains the firing mechanism, which is uh, the pneumatic charging capability as well as what fires the system. And this is, in this particular scenario, it's called a air diverter valve uh, by design. And this disc right here uh, seals against the bore, and that's what allows the pressurized cavity to uh, be discharged in a, in a very aggressive manner. Um, there's a three-quarter inch bar, ball valve in the back. We normally would tie a string to that so that you can discharge this from uh, standing away from it. The air chuck allows you to uh, put the compressed air into the cavity. So whenever you're pressurizing the system, essentially the air goes into the air, uh, the air chuck and through the clean out and it goes around the diverter valve. This diverter valve is this disc right here. And that, that disc essentially seals against the back side of the barrel, allowing all of this cavity area right here to be pressurized to your, uh, to your maximum pressurization setting. And then once you uh, have it to the pressure that you wish, you open this valve. And when you open this valve, the air tries to rush out and it pulls this diverter valve off of the back side of the barrel allowing all of this compressed, compressed air to actually exit through the, uh, through the barrel and push the ball or whatever, whatever, the tar or whatever the load that you're going to use out the barrel. We've had very good success with building this design. We're also going to build a small carriage with wheels that allow you to basically mount it and make it look like a standard cannon and you can change the elevation and things of that nature. More to follow. Hang tight. This is all the materials you're going to need to build the uh, main cannon assembly. You have 6 inch PVC pipe, 3 inch PVC pipe. Uh, this is, the, this is the, uh, the clean out back plates. This is the clean out main coupling. So this is going to thread into the back side. This is going to be the back side of the cannon. Uh, the front end of the cannon is going to be reduced by using a coupling, a 6 inch to 4 inch reducer and then a four inch to three inch reducer, like so. I'll show you in detail all of the stack up that has to happen because we have to modify these slightly by taking the ribs out in order to have the barrel actually pass through this three inch. We'll probably do that on the lathe back here. You could also use, uh, you could use a file to remove that, uh, but the barrel has to be able to protrude through this reducer. As you can see, it's got a rib in there that has to get removed. Um, the material that we're going to use for the diverter valve is the bottom side, bottom side of the bucket. So the, the back diverter valve disc, that's going to be cut out of this bottom side of this bucket. You want to find these, one of these buckets that has a relatively stiff but a perfectly flat side on this side. This is the side that's going to seal against the rubber. So we'll show you that shortly. Uh, got a couple, couple wheels for the carriage. 
Um, bucket of baseballs. You're going to need you're going to need uh, cleaner, PVC cleaner and PVC cement. Do not get uh, CPVC or ABS. You have to have uh, PVC cement. It's the only thing that's safe. Uh, three quarter inch, what's called a close nipple. It's a very short one, and this is going to thread into the ball valve. This ball valve is the trigger mechanism. Basically, this is what will allow the system to fire. We'll drill a hole here so that we can tie a string to it and thread this into that. And then this is going to get drilled and threaded into the back center back here. The air chuck will go uh, to the side of it right here. Um, this is a very important part. This is the part that allows the disc, the diverter disc, or the, the, the disc that we're going to cut out of the bottom of the, of the uh, five gallon bucket. That disc will essentially seal against this rubber assembly. And that's what will allow you to have a sealed barrel until the diverter disc is uh, forced off of the seal by the air rush. And as soon as that happens, then you get all of the compressed gas to go back in uh, around this and into the barrel which is what fires the, uh, the, the baseball down the barrel. These are extra disc material if we decide we need it. That's it for the moment. I'm cutting, cutting this uh, ridge out of the uh, four inch to three inch reducer. Whenever I have this done, the pipe, will, the three inch barrel will actually pass right through it. Instead of a lathe, you can also use a file and a uh, small sanding disc. You basically just want to make this so that you can get the barrel to pass through it. The 4 by 3 inch reducer, I've cleaned out this edge uh, with the lathe. Again, you can use a sander, you can use a file. All you have to do is make sure that this, this assembly will slide over top of the 3 inch barrel completely. And it has to be able to be tight, a little bit tight, so you don't want it really loose because the glue has to set against the PVC. When, when we get done, the front side of this gun is going to look similar to that. Cut the 6 inch PVC. I've made a mark at 5 feet. You need to make the mark all the way around. So we're going to slide the tape all the way around this thing and make that mark so that we have a, a perfect linear line around the pipe to cut. Mark on the pipe and I have my little cutoff saw. We're going to use that to cut off. Make sure that you're wearing safety glasses whenever you do the cutting because PVC in your eye doesn't feel so nice. Pipe to 5 feet length. Uh, next we're going to cut the 3-inch the uh, PVC pipe, that's the that's the board. That one we're going to cut 5 foot 6 inches. So we'll mark that one and cut that one. First step is you're going to use the PVC cleaner. Make sure that you use, I always use the clear stuff, otherwise you'll have uh, the other stuff that's out there on the market is purple and it looks pretty ugly. Uh, the clear stuff dries pretty clear. Um, but you, gotta, you have to prep every surface on here with this cleaning material. So you open the can and uh, we're only going to do the reducers, so we're going to take this swab, and you're basically going to swab the entire surface of this thing. It's important that you get a good glue job, and the only way you can have a good glue job is if you put this primer cleaner on the pipe. So take your time, do a good job. It's important that you have a good glue job. That's, that's the safety of this, of this assembly when you get done. This material dries pretty fast, so after you've coated that one, you get the next part and you do the exact same thing. So this surface is going to go inside of that one, so we're going to do this. Once you have um, all of the surface coated and it's dried, uh, then we're going to apply the cement. And the key to cement, uh, PVC cement, is it dries very rapidly. So you have very little time to get the parts assembled before the glue is going to try to set up. So the amount of time that you're going to see me whenever I apply the glue, as soon as you start sliding the parts in, there's no turning back. You have to do it and you got to do it quick. So take a break for a second. Applying the glue and same as we did with the cleaner, you're going all around the entire inside surface. And you want to coat it relatively well. Again, the glue joint is everything to the strength and the safety of the device. Once you have that part glued, then you grab the second part and you apply glue to it as well. 
You can wipe off the excess after you get it together. Uh, you just want to make sure that everything is coated really well. Um, I have a hammer, mallet, and a piece of wood here to help me put the thing together if, not, if necessary. We'll know here in just a second. Turn this piece up, set them together, put it in. I didn't even need a mallet. That one went in really nice. Okay, so we're going to let that sit for about four minutes, five minutes, and then we can go to the next step. To, uh, we're going to start with this one, and we're going we're gonna to clean that inside surface. Once that surface is totally coated and clean, uh, he's going he's gonna to clean the outside of the next reducer. This is the 4 inch by 3 inch reducer that we, that we cleaned out the inside. Uh, so, the, so the barrel will actually slide through. So that part's ready. He's going to clean the outside of this one. This removes all the oil and fingerprints and stuff like that so that uh, it doesn't uh, affect the sealing quality of the glue joint. If you, if you happen to do, uh, if you try to glue the pipe together without cleaning it, uh, there's a good chance that you'll, uh, that you'll have a not, either a, a not good seal or possibly a seal that leaks, and you could also have a part that, that would come apart. So it's pretty important. All right, so now we have these parts ready. He's gonna apply the glue to both surfaces and press those in. All right, so next we're gonna glue this part. So he's gonna glue the outside of that one. Uh, start with, I would start with this one, it's easier. Push them in flush. There we go. Make sure it stays. That looks pretty good. Awesome. All right. So we're going to let that set up for about four minutes or five minutes. Um, the total cure time on on PVC glue is generally speaking about 15 minutes. So after about 15 minutes, it should be ready to ready to fire. Um, total time to build this is going to take a little longer than that, but nevertheless. This next, uh, next, and that's going to be made out of this bottom part of this of this uh, five gallon bucket. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to use the saw and cut just the bottom so it's easier to uh, to work with, and then we're going to use a uh, scribe and scribe from the center half of the uh, diameter. The total diameter on this is uh, six and three eighths inches, six point three seven five. So let me get that cut off, and then we'll make we'll make the mark so we can cut the final disc uh, diameter out calipers to show the diameter this would be the I'm sorry not diameter this is the radius uh, so that we can scribe this it's 3.187 we're just round it to 188 and he's gonna match it up over here put it on the inside of this area right here it's really easy to get a good measurement all right so once you have that set here's the bottom of our barrel our bucket and you're going to locate the center, which the center, the center is easily seen right there. You're not going to press through. Now you're going to scribe with this side to get to get your line that you're going to cut. Okay, rotate it a little bit. This is our diverter disc, and so I'm going to take it over here on the saw, and we're going to cut cut that line, and we're going to have left over just the center part of this. This is going to be the valve. This is the key component of the of the of the system. If you if you don't have this right, the the cannon will not fire accurately, and it will not fire with force. Uh, you need this disc to be somewhat flexible, but also relatively stiff enough to support the pressure against the barrel uh, from when you charge it with the air compressor. So let me go cut this. of the threaded back cap. So Clinton's going to go across that and then switch it over to the other diagonal. This locates the center of that, of that cap assembly so that we can drill it and tap it for the three quarter inch MPT pipe thread. Uh, that's going to be it for the, for the ball valve. And then we're going we're gonna to make a mark down here in the center. Uh, notice you see the lines right here. These are parting lines or casting lines for this part. So you don't want to drill this uh, the small one into this is 
we're going to put down here on this side. I'll show you in a second. Cap, and we have now marked uh, where the the this is where the three quarter inch MPT is going to thread in, and here is where the air chuck is going to thread in. So I've marked both of those. Um, the the three quarter inch MPT tap is right here. The drill size for that is um, it's actually it's just a little it's just just a little bit uh, larger than a seven eighths. Uh, we're going to use a seven eighths Forstner bit. Uh, because that's the closest thing I've got and we should be able to get the threads, uh, the tap started. And then the, the tap, this is quarter inch MPT and the tap size for that is 7 16 So I'll have a bit that'll, that'll drill that one. And once we get those located, we're going to tap them so that we can then uh, locate these parts in there into the plastic assembly uh, with thread tape. Uh, tapping the two holes, drilling and tapping the two holes. So this is the 3 quarter inch MPT and this is the quarter inch MPT. Um, large tap, very difficult, but you can do it. Um, this is a common tap at uh, plumbing supply houses, and uh, if you have a local plumber or something, a lot of times they'll have them laying around. I have uh, drilled and tapped the, the three quarter inch MPT using this tap, and also the quarter inch MPT, which is going to be for this uh, the air chuck. Uh, the back diverter valve trigger, uh, which is just a three quarter inch MPT ball valve. Uh, that gets threaded into here, and that's what basically uh, becomes your trigger mechanism for the for the cannon to go off. All right, so we're going to move on to another spot. On this step, we're going to attach the uh, black coupler. This is a rubberized coupler to the back side of the of the barrel, and you just tighten these clamps up. Uh, after you set the the distance of three sixteenths of an inch right here from the back side of the barrel to the to the back side of the, of the rubber coupler. This basically gives you a sealing surface against the diverter valve. So whenever this thing is pressurized, this diverter valve will seal against that rubber until uh, you trigger it. And then whenever you trigger it with the ball valve being open, it, it peels this off the back side of the barrel and allows the compressed air to go through the barrel, driving the, uh, the baseball forward. Use the cleaner on, the, this is the back side of the uh, clean out, six inch clean out. We're gonna glue that to the back side of the air cavity. So he's going to start with that. Start with this part first, and then after this one is clean, uh, then do a good job of cleaning this up. Get all of those surfaces primed up and ready to go. Try to keep the glue and the and the cleaner material out of the threads, because uh, that will soften the plastic and make the threads not want to work so nice. Looks good. So slide the coupler on and then we're going to stand it up vertical with the threads up top. Alright, let's get it on there and push it all the way up. Alright, that's good. That's how far it's going to go. All right, so we'll let that set up for a little bit, and then we're going to put the front end uh, assembly on, and then we'll be able to slide the barrel in and glue it. So we're going to clean the, this is the front part of the, uh, the air cavity, and he's going to use the cleaner on the inside. We're not going to, we're not going to do anything with the barrel, the barrel side yet, just the six inch side. So that service gets cleaned and glued, and then we're going to slide them together and hold them for a few seconds so they set up. The reason you want to glue both parts is because if you happen to skip a, a spot uh, accidentally, if you have glue on both parts, you'll get a you'll still get a good seal. All right, slide this on. Actually, set it up vertical quick. 
and push hard. Gotta get it straight. There we go. So it went in all the way, you can see there. And there's our glue job. Awesome. Our next step is a very critical step. This is what sets the barrel depth against the disc. So we have we've used some sandpaper and we've polished this inside surface uh, of the barrel so that it is so that it is very smooth so that the barrel can protrude uh, from all the way inside. And what we're going to do is I'll, start, I'll show you how to set it up and mark it so that you know exactly where it has to get glued into place. So the barrel, go ahead and slide the barrel in. This is kind of a two-man process. Um, as the barrel comes to the inside, use your hand and lift it up so if, and keep pushing. About another two inches. One more inch. All right, so see it, the barrel is protruding quite far. And the inside looks like this. And the very next thing you do is we're going to insert the disc. The disc, the smooth side goes towards the barrel. And the diverter disc can only go as far as right there. So now thread that in. You want to thread this in all the way, as far as it will go. Get one more turn maybe. All right. Now stand it up vertical. And now you're very slowly going to press this barrel in until you feel it touch the disc. More yet. A little more. A little more. Right there. All right, so the barrel is now touching the disc on the, on the back side. And we're going to mark it right here. And that will tell us exactly where the barrel has to get glued and positioned to. So we'll lay it back down, screw the end off of it, and we'll show them how depth, show them the depth of the thread position. This is critical because this is part of the tuning of the system to make it fire right. All right, so the diverter disc is here. You pull it out, and that sets the barrel in position right there, and we're going to glue it into that exact position. All right, so I'm going to mark it, and then we're going to glue it. We have marked our, we've marked our barrel. This is the outer mark. The outer mark represents how far it will protrude uh, from this couple, from this three-inch uh, reducer area. I made a second mark here so that you can see that is the that is the depth of this glue surface area right here. So we're going to clean and, and glue only that area on the barrel. We're trying not to get any glue and not any uh, any material on this as much as possible. So Quentin, go ahead and start. This is a very critical stage. All of the work that you've done to this point, if you mess this depth up, uh, the gun will not be tunable and you'll basically have a piece of plastic that is uh, not, it's not usable. And this is a two-man effort here. You just about can't do this, this stage by yourself. That yeah, looks great. All right, so slide this in. And slide it forward. Try to keep your finger out of the glue. All right. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Oh, too far, too far. Push it back right there. So we're right on our black line, and center that and hold it centered. So he's holding that pipe centered while it sets up. We're actually going to make some uh, little rubber assemblies that will hold that, uh, hold the barrel perfectly in the center of the bore of that uh, as a permanent fixture. That'll be a step here in just a short second. We've cut, uh, we've cut four pieces of pipe. This is three, uh, three quarter inch, just a standard rubber, rubber uh, thick wall pipe. Basically, you're sliding four of them in, and this this sets the barrel concentricity to to the air chamber. So, if you look at it, the, this barrel is now in the center of this area, which will be ideal for this uh, disc to seal against. So, whenever we get done, the disc set, the disc assembly will go in there on that side. And then thread this in place.
part of the tuning is is the clock position of this, which sets the depth, uh, the depth of where the disc is at against the barrel. That's what uh, basically allows you to adjust the, t the firing sequence of the, of, the, of the unit. So all we have now left is we just need to uh, thread in the pipe, uh, the uh, MPT uh, material for the three-quarter inch ball valve and also the air chuck. And this one's going to be ready to fire. Th uh, thread tape. This is uh, standard Teflon blue thread tape. I like the blue stuff because it's a little more, uh, it's a little thicker than the, the cheaper white stuff. Um, normally you would see this used on gas lines and stuff like that, but it also works really, really good for this kind of application. Uh, you basically do about two wraps. And always smooth it over like that. And then start threading this in. Make sure you do not cross thread it. If you cross thread it, uh, you can really mess up the, the plastic threads that you created earlier. Once you get it started, always hand start them. Once you get them started, then use a wrench. And next I'm going to apply the thread tape to the, this is, this is the air chuck. Now there are several different types of air chucks. You'll have to know exactly what kind of what kind of air chuck you're going, hose you're going to use that, that determines the length of this tip. I know that this fits our airlines here in the shop so I'm going to apply that. Same story, one and a half or two, two wraps is good. Tear it off and then hand start it. Make sure you get several threads in and then you can use your wrench and tighten it. So I finished uh, installing the, the um, air chuck and also the ball valve. You note I, I drilled a 3 8 hole back here. That's where we're going to tie our, our trigger rope to. So all that's left is to assemble this thing and bring it up to pressure and do a test fire. Pressure check and test firing, we're going to apply a little bit of grease to this, uh, to this rubber seal right here. That'll help seal uh, against this, uh, the diverter disc. Just going to put a little bit on it. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. Actually, that's Let's try a first shot here. There we go. And just put a little smear of grease on that O-ring. Almost all pneumatics, uh, they have O-rings that are, that are designed to seal. Uh, the O-ring only seals if it's, if it's lubricated. So, something like that. And then we're going to do, go ahead and insert this disc. And thread this in. We're just going to hand, make it hand tight for the moment. Set this aside. All right, I have the compressor set for 75 psi. So our next step is to close the ball valve, <clears throat> take the air chuck, snap it on, and once once it's snapped on, you're going to hear air transfer into the into the barrel assembly. Once it quits transferring, I'm going to trigger it by fire uh, by opening this valve, and that will fire the the device. So. Watch this. All right, fire. Test uh, a ramp up test to this uh, system. Once you have your first test fire at low pressure, before you go increasing pressure, you want to make the system uh, very safe so that if you happen to have a uh, a fractured piece of plastic or something, uh, if this cap, for instance, if this cap would happen to fracture or something like that, as you increase pressure, uh, while you're doing your initial pressure test, just wrap it with a cabinet blanket or something that's safe. It'll, it'll contain any of the shrapnel and keep you, keep you from getting hurt. So we've wrapped it with a cabinet blanket and we've set, we currently have it set at 75 PSI. Um, we're going to do a couple test firings at that and then we're going to slowly 10 pounds at a time, increase the pressure up to our target of 120 PSI. So uh, I'll hand the camera to Quentin and 
to run a couple of test fires. So you got to close the valve. That sets the system ready to fire. Let the pressure build in the system until the transfer is is uh, done. Once the transfer is done, all you got to do is open the valve and it fires. There's number two. Okay, we have uh, we we pulled a, pulled the unit apart, checked the diverter valve. Everything looked great. I re I cleaned all the old grease off. Had a little bit of debris on it, and I re greased the uh, that that rubber surface. And so we're, we've now increased our pressure to 90 psi, and we're going to cycle it at 90 a couple times. Here we go. Fire. And fire. All right. So we're, we're next going to pull it apart, look at the diaphragm again, make sure everything is good. Pull it apart and we're inspecting the disc and we just fired it at 90 psi. The disc is perfect. No fractures, no stressing marks or anything like that. Sometimes on this on this thinner plastic, if it starts to, if you start to see um, how you'll know it's stressed, is you'll actually see a stress line that will be a lighter color in the green. It'll almost look white. So if it would be similar if you took this green material and flexed it a couple times really hard, uh, you'll get a line wherever it's stressed at. This this actually looks really really good, so I don't think it's an issue whatsoever. I think we got a good disc and a good seal. So we're just going to apply another another little bit of. Uh, chassis grease to the to the seal all the way around make sure that we have it well lubricated install the disc and thread in the back assembly now we've made marks uh, on the back assembly so that we make sure that we get the clock position back in the same spot that mark is down here and we're going to match it, this mark to that mark, and that tells us that we have the disc uh, tension exactly the same as it was in the past. All right. So now we're going to increase the pressure. We'll go up to 110 psi. We have the pressure regulator on the compressor set for 110 psi. Close the valve, and I'm going to apply the pressure. And once it comes up to uh, uh, equilibrium and pressure between the transfer. And I'll fire it a couple times and we'll hear it again. Uh, this time get one shot this way and one shot from the front. And fire. our final pressure test. Uh, we've set the pressure regulator for 120 psi. That's our target for this, for this device at the moment. Um, Relubricated the disc, got it ready to fire again. We're going to chuck it up and you're going to see it fire from the front. Uh, we have it set at 120 psi. Ready to go. That went a very long way. <laughs> I don't know if you can see where the gun's at, it's way that way. It's about 100 and, I would say 175 or 200 yards. Anyway, we're gonna step this off and get an official distance. Uh, we just stepped it off, we, got, we had 228 yards uh, was the distance on this. We had a very shallow angle, almost a line drive. So if we get this thing up to about 40 degrees or 42 degrees maybe, uh, we would probably have a maximum distance at 120 PSI. This one would probably shoot a baseball. 
uh, somewhere around 300 yards, maybe a little further. Kind of depends on, on the angle and the wind and everything else. Anyway, successful build. Uh, we're going to make a carriage for it now. So we finalized this cannon. We've got made a little carriage for it. Got a uh, trigger strap on it so you can stem back away from it a little ways. We've greased the diaphragm and have it ready to fire. Go ahead and slide the ball in. Yeah, you should be able to just slide it in and it'll roll in. Make sure it all goes all the way down. There, there it went. All right. Okay. Chuck it up. It's good. All right. Fire. Successful firing. You smiling? He's smiling. All right. Project. I guess we'll call this one complete. That one's gonna be hard to find, Dad. Yeah, I know that one went a long way. Probably that was 300 yards at least. Very cool. Enjoy the. Hope you enjoyed our video. And uh, check on us for the next project.